hipsters will be able to write equations in slope intercept form from t-charts or graphed equations. So at this point, we have talked a lot about being able to graph equations through plug and chuck. Um, now we're going to be talking about some of the relationships between real-world problems and t-charts and the graphs of the t-charts in the equation. So we're going to try and link all of those different ideas together today uh, in order to kind of come up with this idea of how we can write some equations. And then we'll continue to work on that over the next couple days. So we're first going to look at this situation. It says a jar has been in the freezer for quite a while and its temperature has been dropping and will continue to drop two degrees per hour. The current temperature at x equals zero is five degrees. The graph of the situation is graphed to the left. So we're going to start with the real world situation and we're going to be thinking about how we can use this to fill out our xy chart. So when x is equal to zero, what do we know the value of y is going to be? Looking at our real world situation, when no time has passed, what is the temperature going to be? So here we're looking at a number of hours, and this is going to be our temperature. When no hours have passed, what's the temperature going to be? Looking at the real world situation that we just read, when no time has passed, what's the temperature going to be? Axel? It's not going to be three degrees when no time has passed. You're thinking a little bit ahead. Is it here? It's not going to be zero. Let's read through carefully. Jesslyn? Five degrees. Here it tells us when x is equal to zero, the current temperature is five degrees. Moving forward, after one hour, what is the temperature going to be? After one hour, what will the temperature be? Jalen. So make sure that you're reading carefully. So here, what's it going to be? It's going to be three. The temperature is dropping two degrees each hour. Moving forward, one more hour. What would our temperature be after two hours? What would our temperature be after two hours? Jesus, wouldn't quite be zero, wouldn't quite have gotten down to zero. Yep, it's dropping. Not quite dropping that far. We've only gone one more hour. Navi? Wouldn't have dropped quite that far after one more hour. Positive one. Drops two more degrees. Now we also want to think about it because I like to have values that are negative x and positive x. You know I like that. So I want to start thinking about, well, if I go back in time one hour, if I go back in time one hour, what would the, what would the temperature have been an hour ago? If I want to go back in time one hour, what would the temperature have been an hour ago? Crystal. 
Sorry, going back in time from our original time. I'm going to go back in time one hour. Yeah, it would have been seven because at an hour ago, and let's just say that our starting current time was noon, at 11, the temperature was seven degrees, and then it dropped two degrees. All right, so let's talk about how this T-chart and this graph are kind of coexisting here. So we see this first point, zero, five. How does that relate to our real world problem again? What does this first point represent in our real world problem? Zero, five, what does that represent in our real world problem? Isaiah? Yeah, it's the current temperature. So at time is equal to zero or x is equal to zero, that's the current temperature. We're also call this the y-intercept. Let's go ahead and label this as the y-intercept. We call it the y-intercept because this is where we can see that our line intersects the y-axis. So remember, this is our y-axis and this is our x-axis. We can see that this is where our line intercepts our y-axis. And we kind of draw that link between our y-intercept, and kind of this idea about it being our starting point. Okay, this was kind of our starting point. And if we go through, we can plot some of these other points. One, three, this is the temperature after one hour, temperature after two hours, and if we keep following our line, temperature after three hours, four hours, and so on. Or we can go back in time after or one hour ago, two hours ago. So we can see this, we can use this line in many different ways. All right, so we've already used the graph and we've found four points on the line. We've got the x, y values into a t-chart. Now we can use the t-chart to find our rate. All right, we've been doing this for two days now. Do me a favor, go ahead and use the t-chart to find the rate. Show me how you would use the t-chart to find the rate. Okay, what did we find was the rate? What was our change in y over our change in x? Henry, what did you get as your change in y over your change in x? 2 over 1. So I want to push back on that just a little bit. I'm certain that you came over here and you were saying, here's my change in my x. This increased 1. And here's my change in my y. This was a change of 2, but we have to be very clear here. Was this an increase or a decrease, Henry? Decrease. So we need to say that this is a negative 2. So I'm going to come back over here, and I'm going to say my change in y over my change in x was negative 2. How does this relate to our real-world problem? How does this negative 2 over 1, how does this rate relate to our real-world problem? is where you need to go back and reread the real world problem. How does this rate reflect in our real world problem? So here we've walked through this whole thing. We found that this rate over here was represented in our problem as our drop in temperature. We could find it on the t-chart by looking at the ratio of changes. We could also find it on the graph by looking at the changes between those two points. We also identified that this y-intercept was our current temperature here. It was represented on our t-chart as 0, 5, and was represented on our graph where it intersected the y-axis. So we can see this relationship between all of these different pieces. The only piece that we're missing now is our equation. How does this information over here relate to an equation? Well, let's look at the word problem first. I'm trying to find out the temperature, y. My starting temperature is 5. If it is dropping 2 degrees per hour, I want to think about it as negative 2 degrees for 1 hour. I need to multiply by the number of hours, which is x. x is the number of hours. 
to figure that out. So I could write this equation as y equals negative 2x plus 5. So for every hour, I'm dropping 2 degrees. That's what this part represents. And this plus 5 represents the beginning uh, temperature. And so again, we can see those same pieces that seem to be reflecting themselves over and over again. This 5 is our y-intercept. Okay, We labeled this as our y-intercept. This negative 2 over 1 is our rate, or our slope. And what we can see is that no matter what the value is, no matter what the equation is, whether it be something on a graph, whether it be a line in a t-chart, whether it be a line that's being represented in a problem, we can always use this general structure to write the equation. And that general structure looks like this. y is equal to mx plus b. So here we see that the slope, or m, is our coefficient of x. It's also our rate. OK? So let's go up here um, in our key points. We have slope over here as part of our um, definition. So we know that slope is the same thing as the rate should be writing this down in your key points. And we know the rate is the same thing as the relationship between the change in y and the change in x. And in our equation, our general equation, we know that it's represented with m. So it's all of these very different um, equations. Just It's all the same thing. Rate, slope, the change in y in relation to the change in x, m. These all mean the exact same thing. And this is one of our key points for today. One of our other key points has to do with this B. B over here is the y-intercept. And we can see over here it kind of gives us part of our definition. Over here in our key points, we want to write down that the y-intercept is the y-value. when x is 0. So the y value when x is 0, but we also saw it visually on our graph. Okay, So when we were down here, we saw it visually on the graph. That's where we could also say that it is where the line intersects the y-axis. You'll need to know both definitions because if we look at this original problem, if we were only looking at the t-chart, we would have to know that it's where x is equal to 0. If we were only looking at the graph, we would have to see visually where it intersected the y-axis. So we need to know both. So it, how we create um, our equations is if we have a slope, we know the slope is 1 half, we can put that in instead of the m. And if we know the y-intercept is 6, because it's at the point, it goes through the point 0, 6, then we can plug that in for our b. And that makes an equation that we can graph, create a t-chart, or relate it back to a real-world problem. So looking here, we have a graph, and we're being asked to find the equation of this graph. So I'm going to start with my basic equation, which is y equals mx plus b. And I know that I need to fill in the slope and the y-intercept. But I have to find those from my graph. Somebody with a raised hand, which one do you want to find first? The slope or the y-intercept? Axel, which one do you want to find first? The slope. The slope. All right. So we talked about how we could find the slope on a graph. Uh, Melissa gave us an excellent explanation of how to do that. I'm going to pick two points. I see one here, and I see another here. 
And I need to find my change in y over my change in x. So m is equal to my change in y over my change in x. How much is my change in y? Looking at these two points, how much is my change in y? So we're looking here at about 6.5. And so what we've done now is we've actually written an equation that we could have used to graph this. And that's all it is. You find the slope, you find the y-intercept, and you plug it in to our y equals mx plus b. We can do the same thing if we're given the information on a chart instead of on a graph. So again, I'm starting with my y equals mx plus b. And in order to finish off this equation, I need to find the slope and the y-intercept. Which one do you want to do first? Zaheer, which one would you like to do first? Find the slope or the y-intercept? All right, he wants to find the slope. So we know the slope is equal to our rate, which we've been working on for a couple days here. Finding our change in y over our change in x. How can I do that with the t-chart? How can I find my change in y over change in x with the t-chart? How can I find my change in y over my change in x with the t-chart? So we can see here um, that we are able to find the slope, change in y over change in x, by looking at the difference between two points. And we can see that we can find the y-intercept because we're looking for that point where x is equal to 0. All right? That's always going to be on that y-axis. No matter.